And I don't know if you saw, but he extended his hand in greeting. Did you see that? Did you notice that I told him that I will not take hands? That I am of opinion? He was a little bit confused. I, I think it's important for you to understand a little bit about the formation of this country as briefly as I can convey it, because I have written that if historiographers will deign to tell the story of the formation of the country, it will be given the epithet of fiction, and it will not be believed. Because we were British Americans, we had all the rights and privileges and franchises of Englishmen, but the most important thing is that we governed ourselves for 150 years. We tried our own cases in our own courtrooms, we raised our own money. For 150 years, the crown over in England pretty much left us alone. I called it salutary neglect. <laughs> and this would come to bite the King of England on the back of his neck. As a young man, I am involved in the French and Indian War. We are successful, we pushed the French out of virtually all of North America. I then become a married man at age seven and uh, 20. But that's not important. What's important is at around that time, a few years after the French and Indian War ends, Great Britain is almost bankrupt. Their treasury is almost empty. And the king panics, and he turns to his ministers, and he says, do something about this, rather angrily. And they come back to the king of England, and they say, your majesty, we just finished fighting a very expensive war against the French. Most of the cost of that war was spent in British America. Let us, Your Majesty, turn to the American colonial. We shall refill the treasury of Great Britain. I tell you this because it's critically important that you make the direct connection. The French and Indian War and the cost thereof was directly causative of the War of American Independence. And it had pretty much everything to do with money. For the next 11 years, the King of England and his ministers systematically strip us of our freedoms. They usurp our liberties, and they reach into our pockets and our purses until we can't take it any longer. So the point of you extending your hand. We finally come together after 11 years of these insults. The Sugar Act, the Currency Act, the Stamp Act. Violence between armed British soldiers and unarmed civilians <coughs> in New York and in Boston Town. The Townsend Acts, the Quartering Act. Act. Insult and injury after insult and injury. And we come to Philadelphia in September of 1774. I was a Virginia delegate. We are absolute strangers to each other because this is what is so critically important. We were citizens. Well, Georgia doesn't send anyone, but they send a strong letter of support, so I include them in the number. We were citizens of 13 separate what? Colonies. Thank you, I'm a general. I enjoy when you fall into my trap. <laughs> You're right, that was our legal status. We were subjects of the crown. But you need to change the way you think on this subject. We were citizens of 13 separate countries. My country was Virginia. We were meeting in the country of Pennsylvania. Any of you Pennsylvanians? None of you Pennsylvanians? The hosts of that first Congress, by the way, you, you all call it the, uh, the First Continental Congress. We didn't call it that. We didn't know there was going to be a second one. <laughs> we called it the Philadelphia Congress. But you would spend your whole life, if you were a Pennsylvanian, your whole life in Pennsylvania. You would never set foot in the country of Maryland or the country of Delaware or the country of the Jerseys or the country of New York, let alone the Ohio wilderness country. So, we had 13 different economies, we had 13 different currencies, we had 13 different armies. At the time of that first Congress, Connecticut, any of you from Connecticut? Rather large state, isn't it? Land-wise. You wanted to become larger back then. And so you declared war at the time of the First Continental Congress. You had declared war, war, against Pennsylvania and Virginia. We had very different ways of doing everything. So, a New Englander, for example, uh, Mr. Adams from Massachusetts Bay, he walked up to me as I arrived, I was Colonel Washington from Virginia at the time, and he put his hand out and he said, well, it was more like this actually, but he said, uh, <laughs> Colonel Washington, what a great honor to meet you, sir. And I look at his hand and I take a slight step back. 
And he, being a New Englander, closes the distance with his hand out. <laughs> and I take another half step back. Do you understand? 13 different countries, 13 different customs. So from Maryland southward, gentlemen, bow. From Pennsylvania northward, gentlemen proffer their hands. In Pennsylvania, what kind of colony was Pennsylvania? The, 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 the pre predominant religion? Quakers. Louder. Quakers. Quakers. Pennsylvania was a Quaker colony? Women proffered their hands, which was upsetting in the extreme, I will tell you. <laughs> and so we had some very awkward moments. Customs were very different, and it's important that you think about that, because it's a miracle that we came together for a variety of reasons, an absolute miracle. So it's a long lecture to explain to you, sir, why I do not take hands. <laughs> I bow in your honor. I bow in your honor. I've done lectures. <laughs>